untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Vedric Astral Archmage, a blue-red spells deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the 3-mana 1-2 Legendary Human Wizard, since if it's neither day or night it becomes day as Vedric enters the battlefield, introducing the day and night cycle that we're familiar with from Innistrad, and then instant and sorcery spells we cast cost X mana less to cast, where X is Vadric's power, and of course starts out as a 1-2, but whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, we can put a plus one plus one counter on Vadric, so that can quickly start accumulating extra power to make our instants and sorceries cheaper. And speaking of instants and sorceries, almost our entire deck is made out of instants and sorceries, a very few other cards in the deck, and I've kind of split up all the cards in different categories to make it easier to go over over the deck here, starting out with ways to protect Vadric. We've got Lazada Plating, giving our permanence hexproof, Glint, and then Dive Down. The fact that Glint costs 2 mana doesn't really matter, because as soon as we play Vadric, which is the creature we want to protect, then Glint is going to cost a single blue mana, so same as Dive Down. And then Plating we can also cast for a single blue mana, so if we have one of these in our opening hand, we'll often want to wait until turn 4 to play Vadric and have the protection available. And then of course we also have a few counter spells that could do a similar job. Then we've got the card draw category, starting out with think twice to draw a card, and we can also flash it back for two and a blue. And flashback cards in general are quite good here, as we can get full value out of the mana discount from Vadric. Then we also have Arcane Infusion, which is similar, can pay 2 mana to look at the top 4 cards of our library and reveal an instant or sorcery to put into our hand, and we can flash it back for 5 mana. Then Silun Division can be played as a land or as an instant to look at the top 6 to reveal an instant or sorcery and put it into our hand. Solve the Equation can tutor up any instant or sorcery card and put it into our hand. Then we've got Behold the Multiverse, which can scry to and draw two, which we can also foretell first, as well as Chemister's Insight, which can draw two cards, and then has Jumpstart, so we can replay it out of the graveyard if we discard a card from our hand. Next up is Tesseret's Gambit, which is quite synergistic with Vadric, as we can use the Phyrexian mana, and then if Vadric has three power, we can basically cast it for free, and we also get to proliferate in addition to drawing two cards, so we can put an extra plus one counter on Vadric. Then Pirate's Pillage is also a way to potentially generate extra mana if we already have a large Vadric. As an additional cost, we have to discard a card to draw two, and we get to generate two treasure tokens, so we can potentially cast Pirate's Pillage for a single red mana, and then generate two treasures in the process. And then we also have Unexpected Windfall, which is quite similar, although it's going to be double red even with a three-powered Vadric, so we won't be able to generate quite as much mana with it. But it is an instant, so plays well with the other instants in the deck. Then Experimental Overload I also put in the card draw category, as it can get back an instant or sorcery from our graveyard, and generate a large weird token in the process. And then Discover the Formula from Alchemy is also quite powerful, seeking three non-land cards, and then all cards in our hand perpetually get a one mana discount. And then Seagate Restoration we can play as a land or as a card draw spell. Then our next category is Interaction, ways to interact with things that are already in play. So we've got Lightning Bolt dealing 3, we've got Blink and Into the Royal to bounce stuff, and the Kicker of course also gets the discount from Vadric, so we can potentially cast these for double blue to bounce a permanent and draw card. Then we've got a Braid to deal with artifacts or deal 3 damage, Cinderclasm as a sweeper, Fire Prophecy as more spot removal that also gives us a bit of card selection, Brittle Blast will make it so creatures and planeswalkers the opponent controls will get exiled if they die, and then deals 5 damage to a creature or planeswalker. Fight with Fire is excellent if we have a large Vadric in play as we can easily kick it, and then divide 10 damage as we choose among any number of targets. Sarkon's Corn, another great removal spell. We've got Beacon Bolt that can also be jump-started out of the graveyard to deal damage equal to the number of instants and sorceries in our graveyard. Electrolyze to deal 2 damage divided as we choose and draw a card. Prismari Command, also a way to deal with artifacts and has a bunch of different modes. We've got Rawls Outburst as a bit of removal that also lets us draw a card. Rivers Rebuke to bounce all permanency opponent controls back to their hand. Magma Opus as a powerful card that can make a 4-4, deal some damage and draw cards. Then Electro Dominance and Jaya's Immolating Inferno are powerful X spells that we can also target upstairs at the opponent, so those are ways to potentially close out the game. And then Immolating Inferno potentially deals damage to multiple targets, although it does require a legendary creature in play to cast it. And then Electro Dominance also lets us cheat an extra card into play. 
And then Shatter Skull Smashing, another removal spell for creatures and planeswalkers that we can also play as a land. Then moving on to the next category, which is counter spells, which some people may not like, but they are quite useful with Vadric, as we can pass a turn, let it switch to night time, get that extra counter, and then our counter spells become much cheaper to cast and are also a way to protect our Vadric. So we've got Disdainful Stroke, Essence Scatter for creatures, Memory Lapse, we've got Negate for non creatures, Tails End, great at countering opposing commanders, of course, counter spells still quite good. We've got Exclude to counter a creature and draw a card, Unwind to counter a non-creature and untap three lands, which can potentially generate extra mana if we have a large Vandrick. We've got Dismiss to counter and draw. We've got Kindred Denial to counter and seek a card with the same mana value. Rewind to counter and untap four lands. So of course also great with other instant speed card draw. And then Commit to Memory. And then the next category is the Mana Discount category, so that includes Mana Ramp Artifacts, as well as Pump Spells to increase Vadric's power to potentially make our instants and sorceries cheaper. So we've got the Celestus, which can also potentially switch it from day to night and night to day, which also puts extra counters on Vadric. We've got Heraldic Banner, which can make mana and also increase Vadric's power by one. Then Expanded Anatomy, we can potentially cast for free with a 3-powered Vadric, and then we'll put two plus one plus one counters on him, as well as giving it Vigilance until end of turn, so that's a great way to make future spells even cheaper. Then we've got Cold Steel Heart as a bit of mana acceleration alongside Arcane Signet. Then Goblin Electromancer makes our instants and sorceries one cheaper to cast, and if it soaks up a removal spell, then maybe Vadric survives. And the same goes with Baral Chief of Compliance, which also lets us loot if we counter something. Then we've got Sudden Breakthrough, giving two extra power and generating a treasure, as well as Invigorated Rampage, potentially adding four power to Vadric, so great for casting lots of those expensive spells with X in their mana cost, or maybe those kicker spells. And then Fists of Flame also gives Vadric extra power and can also count as a cantrip. And then we've got a Reckless Charge giving three extra power, also as flashback, so more pump spells to give us a nice mana discount. And then the last category here, I could not really define. We've got Mizzix Mastery as a great spell, especially with Overload. Can just be triple red if we have a large Vadric to replay everything from our graveyard. We've got Time Warp to take an extra turn alongside Karn's Temporal Sundering. And then Expansion Explosion can be a way to copy an instant or sorcery, or we can just cast a large explosion to deal a bunch of damage and draw some cards. Then the mana base is pretty straightforward. One land I want to highlight is Hall of Oracles, which can potentially put additional plus one counters on Vadric, so it's also quite synergistic. And then a whole host of dual lands that you're used to by now. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, facing Clothis, a god of destiny. And uh, what do we think of this? Yeah, it's not the worst. A bit of early interaction for creatures. And then Celestus can ramp into River's Rebuke as well. Not sure when exactly I'm going to play Vadric, since I'm going to want to protect him. All right, no early mana creatures. It is a little surprising. I guess we'll foretell this then. Not even a turn three Clothus. So, is it time for Celestus? I think so. Does get the day night cycle started, but unlikely that our opponent lets it go to nighttime right away. Since that's usually an easy way to get the first count on Vadric by just passing, letting it switch to night. Fires of Invention, okay. That's a powerful one. And an Oracle of Moldaya, which we're going to try and kill right away. So still missing a counterspell or other way to protect Vadric. But I could go for play Vadric, and then in their upkeep, I could abrade the Oracle before they get a chance to get value from it. Plus I can also Behold for one mana. That seems fine. And I guess I could wait until after the draw step to see what they draw next. Sweltering Suns, okay. I guess I still want to braid. If 
Vivian means at least we don't have to worry about Sweltering Suns if they plus. Although they might destroy Celestis. It's going to be a Clothis. And they go for Celestis. Alright, what do we want? Dismiss seems good. Overload also seems good. Sometimes restoration means retribution. Okay. So do I want a reverse rebuke? That would mean that they get to Sweltering Suns next turn, which is something I would like to counter. So take a different approach. Strike me and you strike nature. And then next turn I could rebuke for four mana. Does mean they get an extra Vivian activation. Stop nature. So there's a sweltering suns. And as a scatter could deal with a scute swarm. They do have an activated ability here to kind of synergize with their fires of invention. Also requires a bit more mana. Alright, back to daytime. Three counters on Vadric, so we can cast a five mana Magma Opus. Although Rivers Rebuke is also looking good. Maybe I'll go for another upkeep play here to kill Vivian and get an extra counter on Vadric. Although I suppose Vadric can also just kill Vivian. Yeah, we'll pass. I could upkeep, tap down their land so they wouldn't be able to activate the Slumber Mound. Cosmos Elixir is fine. And the uh, Phylath, okay, that's potentially a problem, although Reverse Rebuke will at least temporarily deal with it. And uh, Brittle Blast is also a decent answer. Do I want Brittle Blast or maybe a Glint for protection? We've got a fight with Fire as well, so maybe I actually want the uh, protection from Glint. Opponent gets to scry. Another counter on Vadric, and I think it's time to send those permanents packing. Overload can pick up something from the graveyard. Clothis did a good job so far getting rid of some of the more powerful ones like Magma Opus. But I guess getting back a Reverse Rebuke or a Counterspell here is not bad. A little bit light on blue mana, so I wouldn't be able to cast the Counterspell. But I think I still want to overload. Maybe go for a uh, Reverse Rebuke again. Could have also gone for Essa Scatter. Although Fight with Fire should be able to deal with Phyleth just fine. Can also go upstairs to deal 10 damage. Fires means they can only cast one more spell here. Phyleth it is. Sure. Can also destroy the plants with Electrolyze. In response to the counter. Doesn't seem like I need to glint since they can no longer cast any spells because of Fires of Invention, so we're safe to tap out. Ooh, Expanded Anatomy is a fun one. And then a kicked fight with fire should do it. So five here, five there. And 
And there we go. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Samut, a voice of descent. So Naya caller to deck, and our hands pretty decent. An early cold steel heart, a bit of removal for creatures, and some counter spells. So gonna scry into hopefully not our land here, and then I'll have to wait and see if I want to commit Vadric turn three or maybe take a slower approach. So as good as Gambit is with Vadric, I need a land desperately. Opponent's got the Signet, which I could abrade here. That seems fine. Or I could play my own Cold Seal Heart. Feels like they need Signet for mana fixing. Revelry, just to draw a card. And then probably go for Cold Seal Hearts over casting the Infusion. And this can name Red. So next turn, play Vadric, maybe keep up into the Royal to protect him. Glorious Anthem's fine. And an Essence Scatter, alright, so now we could maybe counter Samut for one mana. Could use some more lands, and Infusion's not gonna help me find those. But we've got creatures covered. Right, so I'm gonna pass it back to switch it to Knights. And then I still have a Rewind, which can be combined with Arcane Infusion to maybe draw some more cards. Parallel Lives. I think we can let Resolve and just counter whatever makes the tokens. Could also bounce it with Into the Royal. So, Infusion. Opponent might be holding a one mana removal spell here. And might want to get Smashing as an extra land, although both Solve the Equation and Pillage are tempting. I guess Pillage also kind of makes more mana here in a way. And I can discard a Beacon Bolt, which we can still jumpstart. And then I want to try and casting two spells. Probably not going to use Hall of Oracles this turn. Since we want to switch it back to daytime. Alright, opponent finally goes for the bolts. That's fine, I guess. We'll have to rewind. So maybe I do get to use my hull after all. Kind of regretting not playing my land first now. Okay. So... I guess I can use the hall. Hit for three. And then I'll just pass with a bunch of instants available. As it goes back to daytime. Can flash back my arcane infusion. Alright, so Feldar retreats, probably worth countering here. So they cannot make double tokens with parallel lives. But yeah, this is how we pull ahead, and then we can eventually take over once we find a few more card draw spells. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Surin, Vengeful Bloodlord. So life gain or vampire strategy. Our hand's not bad. Couple early counter spells for creatures, which presumably our opponent's playing. And then we can wait on Vandrake until we feel comfortable that he's gonna survive. So. Hopefully they don't have a powerful 2-drop here. Gonna hang on to Essence Scatter as opposed to playing Cold Steel Heart. And 
Valkyrie is certainly worth countering. And I'll keep up Exclude, even though I guess our opponent's likely to play their Planeswalker here and get Valkyrie back from the graveyard. So maybe I should play Vandrick while uh, we have a window here, since I don't have anything in hand to protect him anyway. And yep, there's Sorin. Probably get back Valkyrie. Alright, and then we want to switch it to night time. So, just gonna pass. And then we can canisters in the opponent's turn. Twice potentially. Opponent going for a dark ritual, okay. Six mana available. Can potentially draw into a counter spell with the canisters inside as well. I'll probably exclude the Angel. And a Profane Procession could be problematic. Let's see if we can draw into an answer. Not quite, so that resolves. And then I'll have to go digging for an answer in my turn. It is daytime, Mystic's Mastery, you say. Not all that helpful right now. Kick things off with the Chemsters. Since I don't want him untapping with Profane Procession if I can help it, and solve the equation, I could find a way to interact with it. Don't have any way to destroy enchantments, but a Bound Spell I guess would be helpful. Although I guess we wouldn't be able to counter it on the way back. Or I can just get a way to protect Vadric. That's probably better. So, what's the best one here? Probably go for the Lasso Tap Plating. And then no attacks. Discard a Mountain. So they could spend their turn on Profane Procession. Valkyrie requires 7 life more than the starting life total, which is 25 in Brawl, so they need 32 life before it gives the plus 2 plus 2 bonus. Opponent passes, which lets it transform to nighttime. And, uh, yeah, I guess we can attack Sorin here. Opponent might go for Profane Procession. Well, Plating. And then I could switch it back to Daytime by playing Cold Steel Heart, which seems worth it. I think I want more blue mana, although I guess we do need quite a bit of red for Mizzix Mastery. Alright, I guess red's fine. Although I suppose our opponent can just reuse the Profane Procession right away here, so... At least we made them spend all the mana again. So we're just ramping up our mana to cast a big Mizzix Mastery. Playing Vadric probably doesn't accomplish much with that Profane Procession out. And Jani's welcome. Yeah, they're welcome to have it.
All right, that's certainly worth countering. Time warp's looking good. Okay. So I want to play Vandrick plus Time Warp in the same turn. If possible. Which I guess I could here. I get to untap and then Mystic's Mastery back the Time Warp. So that seems powerful. So mastery with overload. And our opponent has seen enough. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Omnath, the Locus of the Royal, the teamer colored one. And my hand's not terrible. Brittle Blast deals with Omnath. No early acceleration or way to protect. Vadric is the only downside here. I think I'm gonna end up playing this tapped since we have Chemisters Insight for card draw. So not too worried about that. Get these tap lands out of the way. And then might already go for Vadric on three. Since it's not like waiting is gonna allow me to keep a protection. So hopefully no removal here. Just to consider, that's fine. Don't really expect an Omnath deck to be playing too many counter spells. Typically more of a ramp strategy. Alright, opponent's got their own Fadric. Fair enough. So I can pass a turn which also gives them an extra counter on Vadric. And then I can Brittle Blast for one mana in their turn. That seems fine. Sure. I guess ours gets the counter first, so I can do this before they get their extra counter. And then we can let Omnath resolve, cast the Chemisters in sight, and maybe answer it with Immolating Inferno in our turn. Iteration. I guess we'll insight a response. Do I want a memory lapse iteration? Yeah, maybe that's okay. Okay, another counter spells excellence. So good time to play a tap land. And then pass with Chemisters and Denial available. Chandra is certainly worth countering. And our opponent has seen enough. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Muldrotha, the Gravetide, and our hand's pretty decent. Turn to Electromancer, and then... We can see if we want to tap out for Vedric, or maybe keep up some more interaction. And then the Crossroads can name Red. Even if we're on the play, it's still pretty decent. Get to Scry, and the Memory Lapse seems decent. Can maybe help protect Vedric. For now, I'm happy tapping out for Electromancer. Ether Spell Bomb as a bounce spell. Alright, I guess we'll tap out for Vandrick. If our opponent wants to bounce him, that's fine. And if they kill it, we still have an Electromancer making stuff cheaper. So at this point we're still missing kind of a card draw effect to refuel. We can make lots of mana with Invigorated Rampage, we have a few counter spells, 
but we're still missing a way to dig deeper into our deck and kind of get ahead once we generate that extra mana. Of course, Spellbomb quite synergistic with Muldrotha, as they can potentially get it back from the graveyard as an artifact. Same goes with fetch lands like Evolving Wilds as a different card type. But we should have ways to deal with Muldrotha so it doesn't hit the battlefield. So big turn for our opponent. Can they get rid of Vandrick? That way it will do exactly that. And Spellbomb bounces Electromancer. That's fine. So lots of early interaction from our opponents. Snarl comes into play tapped at the moment, but then I can still keep up Memory Lapse or Essence Scatter. And we'll save the Smashing for later. Spring Bloom Druids. Probably worth countering here. And then now the question is, do I want to tap out for Vandrick once again, or do I wait until I can protect it with Memory Lapse? Salundi Vision, a good draw. So I can probably afford to play Smashing as a tap land and then cast a Vision. Or I can maybe start by casting Vision, unless I want to switch it to Knight. Although that doesn't really help us with Vandrick, so... I guess we'll uh, Vision here. And find... a bunch of goodies. Probably wanted to tap my red land there on second thought. Um, probably want to go with Dismiss. And play this tapped. So we can memory lapse something like a Guardian project, although we can actually let the project resolve and just counter whatever creatures they play next so they won't get any value from the projects anyways. Alright, land is excellent, so now we can play Vadric and still have memory lamps available. And then we're still waiting for a big card draw effect. Scarab God will send packing. And our opponent has seen enough. Alright, get to untap with Vadric, and commit to memory was actually a perfect draw, as we can potentially use the memory half to refuel, and then have a lot of mana available to still potentially counter whatever our opponent plays next. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a niv Mizzet deck. This one is uncounterable, so this hand's not particularly great. A bunch of burn spells without many targets and uh, an Essence Scatter that doesn't do much. This is better. Got my Arcane Signet, so I can maybe go for turn 3 Vadric, protect with Dive Down. And then take it from there. And then we'll have to find a removal spell for niv Mizzets. Baral's also good. I think I still Signet here. Or do I? Yeah, I'll Signet. Might get countered. But both Baral and Signet are valuable. So nothing from our opponents. They're just more likely to have removal for creatures than artifacts. And uh, interesting spots. Probably don't want to commit Vadric yet, but could maybe bait with Baral. And then if they kill it, hmm. could also foretell Behold the Multiverse. Could also make a treasure with Magma Opus if I think I need more mana. Yeah, let's play Baral. Kind of hoping this gets countered. And then I'll just foretell Behold. They let it resolve, so they're maybe planning to kill it with removal. In which case, do I dive down? Yeah, probably. Even though I'd prefer to protect Vadric, still seems like a good exchange. Opponent goes digging with iteration. 
a card that actually didn't make the final cut in my deck, surprisingly, just because it doesn't play all that well with a discount on Vadric. And yeah, this deck was difficult to get to 100 cards. At some point I had 180 cards in the deck, so it was very difficult to make those cuts. And Expressive Iteration was one of the victims that didn't make it. Opponent finds a Goblin Electromancer. Do they have the land to play it? They do. Goes for Royal Eruption instead. Well, at least they give up some value. Now I can play Vadric, but I would be unable to protect him. This might be a main phase unexpected windfall situation. To hit my land drop, make sure it doesn't get countered. Can discard the charge, which can still be flashed back, or maybe beacon bolt, since I don't think I'll need it anytime soon. Sure. Alright, land is good. And then, still gonna wait on Vadric. Good foretell, behold the multiverse. And then next turn, maybe go for Vadric. All their opponents keeping up potential counterspell mana. Which makes me less interested in going for it. Now I could play Vadric and still commit for 4 mana, but then I would be tapped out and they can kind of do whatever they want with all their mana available. So, yeah, we'll just have to be patient. Still have a Behold I can cast at instant speed, so we're using our mana, whereas the opponents pass with 5 mana without doing anything. And then commit's not a bad answer to Nif, because it actually can somewhat counter it despite Nif being uncounterable. So probably want to fetch before casting Behold. Can probably use an extra Mountain. That resolves. Seagate Restoration. Not a card I'm going to tap out for anytime soon, but I'll take an extra land. Celestis is not bad. Okay. We do have enough mana for Magma Opus, so I could cast that at instant speed. Maybe have them counter it and then resolve Vadric, which can combine with solve the equation to still do a lot of work. Can tap down their lands as well, so this is kind of a must counter. Right, neutralize, opponent's got one mana left. And then now we can play our commander somewhat safely. And uh, could do something fun with Reckless Charge, which I guess is reasonable. Opponent actually had a Frostbite. Okay, we'll have to counter that, but that's not going to leave me any mana to have fun with my Reckless Charge, unfortunately. Yeah, so it goes. Opponent looking at my beacon bolt, so they probably don't want to tap out for Niv Mizzet. And we get to untap with Vadric, so that's a big win. Okay, do want to get an answer to this Frostbite, if possible. Could also start comboing with a Reckless Charge once again, but probably want to make sure we have protection first. So we'll start here. That will also switch it back to daytime, potentially. And then uh, lasso tap plating could be good, or maybe an unwind. Can untap some of my lands as well. And then now do I want a reckless charge? Cancel one mana chemisters. Yeah, kind of.
Okay. And then could also cast memory here. All their opponents down to two cards in hand, so that might not be worth it. So instead we can jumpstart chemisters, discard the land. And uh, I guess keep digging. And want to find a way to maybe deal with Niv. Although discover the formula is tempting. Could get the bounce spell. Dismiss. Lots of great options. Let's get discover the formula. Can cast it for two mana now and then still have my unwind available. Opponents can ionize. I would like to resolve my discover. Alright, opponent counters back once again. Looks like they accidentally countered the wrong spell, so we still get to untap our lanes, which is nice. What do I want to do here? Probably just play the Celestas at this point, since I don't have any counter spells left. That also lets me loot with the Celestas. And Vadric now survives the opponent's burn spell. And Niv Mizzet, we can still Beacon Bolt. Locust God, okay. That's a good one. So, could use the Celestus, switch it to Knight, get an extra counter on Vadric as well. Probably want to Beacon Bolt Locust God, even though that leaves Niv. And then I could maybe just Memory this turn. While the coast is clear. Sure. So we want to kill the Locust God before casting memory, otherwise they would get a bunch of insects. And then refresh. And I still have a bunch of mana available. Okay, time warp, looking great. Can cast another anatomy. Get in for seven. Do I want a sudden breakthrough? I guess might as well. Take an extra turn. And an Immolating Inferno can close out the game here, although I guess our opponent's at 7, so we could have just attacked for the win. Alright, good game. So, managed to beat the Blue-Red Mirror, basically. Opponent never got to cast Niv Mizzet, but that's because Beacon Bolt was looming in our graveyard. And, uh, yeah, got to see the power of Vadric with the mana discount, letting us combo off here with our commit memory. Very nice to have these sort of Wheel of Fortune type effects when we have a large Vadric and get to keep comboing off in the very same turn. So yeah, very pleased with how this deck turned out. It was a lot of work to get it down to 100 cards, but I feel like we made a good selection here. And yeah, if you're into these Blue Rat combo control decks, this might be the deck for you. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.